Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the process from beginning to end of cleaning an aquarium canister filter. Whether you use this as a guide on how to clean your canister filter, or you just want to see what a disgusting canister filter looks like, this is the video for you. So, this tank behind me is my 36 gallon freshwater aquarium, and I'm going to be using the Fluval 305 canister filter on this tank in today's demo. Now, it's hard for you to see back there, but there is a little intake and outtake that is obviously for the canister filter, but let's dive a little bit deeper into that. So if you're unfamiliar with this tank, this is my 36 gallon community tank. I would say it is pretty heavily stocked, but it's also pretty heavily planted. Now, due to this, um, I haven't had to clean this filter in a really, really, really long time, as we're about to see today. But back here are the two hoses. If you're unfamiliar with how a canister filter works, one of these hoses is sucking water out of the aquarium, and one of these hoses is pumping water back in. Now, as you can see, I already have most of the stuff removed from the stand down here. That's actually another canister filter right there. This one is very similar to the one we're going to be using today, but this guy back here is going to be the star of the show. So I just need to slide some of this stuff out, and as you can see, here is our canister filter. Those are the hoses coming down from the tank, and this is what does the primary filtration for this aquarium. Now, I've noticed the flow rate in the aquarium has actually slowed down a little bit. As you can see, that jet that's supposed to be blowing out water, clean water at least, uh, it's not moving the surface as much as it used to, which is generally a pretty good indication that it's time to clean the filter. So as you can see, this filter's pretty far back here. It is made to be concealed under the aquarium stand, which is really why I'm a huge fan of canister filters. But the first thing we're gonna do is unplug it and cut off all the power. So now that the flow has stopped, we're gonna come right back down here. And depending on your canister filter model, there's gonna be different ways to do this. But the first thing we have to do is shut off the water from the tank. Basically consists of closing these two hoses off because if we don't close the hoses off first, water's gonna pour everywhere. So on this fluval right here, all you do is you lift up this little gate valve and that stops the flow of the water. Now this is gonna be different for every canister filter, but then to remove the hoses, we just lift up the second lever and these hoses pull right out the top. So now that that's set aside, I'm just gonna pull the actual canister filter forward. I have it conveniently placed on some towels just in case things were to leak, especially because this is an older unit, um, it could be prone to leaking sometimes. So I just keep it on some towels just in case. Luckily though, I haven't had too many issues. But now that the canister filter is ready to go, I'm gonna take it to the bathroom. But before we do that, we need to get some aquarium water. We're gonna do this with a simple five gallon bucket and a gravel vacuum. Now the reason we're using tank water is because it's dechlorinated, obviously the fish are living in it, and this water is what we're going to actually use to clean the canister filter media. You don't want to clean a canister filter with tap water as it will kill off the good bacteria that's keeping the tank alive, so I'm just going to get around three gallons of clean aquarium water, and then we'll go ahead and bring this to the canister filter. And just like that, here we are. Now I choose to do this in the bathtub simply because this gets messy. Like I said, I haven't opened up this canister in a long time. I have no clue what's gonna be in here. I just figured this is the safest place to do it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and start by unclipping the clasp and removing the lid to the filter. And as you can see, it's pretty gross. That's what I was afraid of. So just right off the bat, we can see there's quite a bit of disgusting material in here. Um, we'll deal with the actual motor part separately, but this is where all of our media is gonna be. So I'm gonna first take out the sponges here Ooh, those are gross. Okay, and then we're gonna set these aside. But now that all the sponges are removed, I'm just gonna be dumping them into that water. I was gonna set them aside, but they're so gross, they need to be tended to immediately. This piece of plastic right here, we're gonna also just set aside. That's just gonna get rinsed in tap water. The actual media is gonna get rinsed in tank water, if that makes sense. Same thing with this little plastic piece. We're gonna set that aside. That needs a good cleaning. And then we're gonna start with the media trays. So this top media tray consists of, what do we have? We have some bio rings, some little pot scrubbers. Now none of this stuff is really disposable media, so it just really needs a good cleaning. I'm just gonna switch this around in aquarium water for you know, a good length of time until it's clean, and then we'll set it aside. Just like so. Next up in here, it looks like we have some more bio rings and some foam. Now each canister filter is going to be set up separately or set up differently, I should say. If you have uh, something like carbon in your canister filter, that stuff can be replaced separately. Um, all the media in here is reusable, just a heads up as I mentioned earlier. But if you do have disposable media, this is a great time to replace that. Now that the bio media is all rinsed, 
I think the last thing we have is just a few more sponges and this disgusting tray. All the water that's in the actual canister filter is gonna be so gross and disgusting, there's no point in keeping this. This is just gonna go straight down the drain. I mean, it's, it looks like a murder scene in here. Like, that's gross. That's disgusting. We're also gonna give this a good rinse as well. But now for really the grossest part, we're gonna be taking all these disgusting sponges and rinsing them out. This could take a while though, so we're gonna go into time lapse, but you definitely get the point here. And now that all the foam is clean, it's time to rinse off the plastic stuff. Once again, I'll just throw you to a time lapse. We're just gonna give this nasty stuff a good clean, or a good rinse, I should say. Now that we have the main parts clean, I'm just gonna dry this off real quick, or at least the outside, and we can start putting the canister back together. Now for the flubles, all of these little filter pads or the mechanical filtration just slides in here. Now I got these as clean as I could. They're not perfect, that's for sure, but they're definitely cleaner than they were. I believe you can replace these. Um, these are probably looking for a replacement sometime soon, but these little filter pads just kind of click into place. So nothing too complicated. Just make sure they're in there nice and secure. And then this whole contraption slides right down here. Next up, we're gonna do the rest of our media basket. So first things first is the foam. This goes on the very bottom, at least in the case of the Fluval. And we're gonna to top it off with some biomedia, these little ceramic rings, and some more biomedia. So now that the canister is clean for the most part, we need to work on the actual motor. Now for the motor, generally the first thing I like to do is just wipe it down. Um, this one isn't too bad, surprisingly. Well, maybe it is, it's actually really gross. But the first thing is I'm just gonna give it a nice wipe down. It can get a little dusty sitting under the aquarium stand. So we'll just make sure it's looking nice and clean. Then we can access the impeller on the flubles. Oh, that's gonna be an issue. Mm. Anyways, as I was saying, the flubles is right here. Let's not break anything else. Um, what I like to do is obviously get the impeller out of the way and then clean out the impeller well. Uh, this gets super dirty, at least on the fluvals. So we'll go ahead and clean that out like so. And then I like to take the impeller and just scrub it with an old toothbrush under the sink. That's boring though, so I'll be right back. Now we'll take the clean impeller, slide that right back into place. Uh, be careful, once again, don't want to break anything else. And then I'm just gonna try to click everything back into place. Now obviously, um, we're missing a piece that I snapped off. Luckily, this will operate just fine without it. It's just this little cover clip. However, I will be ordering another one of these just to be safe. Now, once this is clean to the best of your abilities, all we're gonna do is take the bottom, take the top, and clip them back down. Now, there is some other maintenance that you'll have to do on these canister filters. Luckily, a little less frequently. Every once in a while, you will have to replace that O-ring, and also every once in a while, you will have to replace that impeller. I've already replaced the impeller on this canister not too long ago, so we are in good shape. But now that this is all clean, we can get rid of this disgusting water, probably clean this bathtub, and then head back to the tank. But before we do that, let's just take a look at this. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't clean your aquarium filter for a year. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, deep clean this bathtub now, and then I'll meet you guys back at the tank. Just like that, we are back at the aquarium with the canister filter. Ignore all the stuff over here that's supposed to go on the stand, whatever. As you can see, I topped the tank off with clean aquarium water or clean dechlorinated water for aquariums, you get the point. Because we're gonna need that water to fill this canister back up. As you remember, this was full of water, it's not anymore. So the first thing we do now, once it's all sealed back up, I'm gonna go back to the stand and we're gonna plug those hoses in. And as soon as we unlock those hoses and get the water flowing, it's gonna automatically fill this canister all the way back up. As you can see, we got the canister back in place. Now all we have to do is plug in the aqua stop valve, at least that's what this is called. Lock this into place and then open the water flow. And as you can see, as it fills, all of those bubbles basically mean uh, the thing is filling with water, the canister is filling. Normally, they wouldn't quite bubble out of the intake tube, but in this case, I guess it really doesn't matter. And then once the canister is full, all we have to do is plug it in. As you can see, the filter is just starting to catch its prime. I just plugged it in. As you can see, there's just a little bit of water trickling out. However, we're gonna give it a few minutes and it should be up and running in no time. And as promised, here's the canister all up and running. As you can see, the flow rate is much, much better than it was. I also took this opportunity to take the intake screen out from back here and clean that off. It was built up with a whole bunch of moss and algae. Cleaned it all off and now we are good to go. That flow rate is so much better than before. Just like that, the canister filter's up and running, the tank is clean, and we should be set for another year. Well, okay, maybe not. 
Uh, for canister filters, generally, I think it's recommended to clean them about every three to six months. Hopefully, I'll keep that up next time with this canister filter. Um, but regardless, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions about canister filter maintenance, do not hesitate to leave those down in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer all of them. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and good.